Hey kids, what time is it? That's right, it's Kids Zone O'Clock. Pastor Adam here, and I've got my friend Peyton with me today, and we're gonna open up this mystery box, and we're gonna talk about what's inside. We're gonna do a craft together, and we're gonna sing a special song together today. So I hope you are ready to have a great time together, and we might even have so much fun, you might want to invite your parents to come and join you in all the fun. They might enjoy it just as much as you do. Well, we've got this mystery box today, and this mystery box comes from somebody special on staff. This is from Jen Strickland. She put something in this mystery box, and I'm a little worried because I don't, when staff people put stuff in the box, we got to worry, okay? So that's why I have you here because I, I don't know what's in here and I'm a little scared. And so I'm, I'm going to have you open it because you're much braver than I am. Okay, does that work? You ready, Peyton? So, so what do you think's in the box? What is it? It sounds big. You got any guesses? It moves around a little bit, but not too much. What do you guys think is in the box? Miss Catherine. What? We're back in the building. Again. But guess where we are? Where? We're outside Miss Jen's office. Miss Jen, she did a craft for us a while back. She did, and guess what? Uh -oh. I asked her to do the mystery box. Uh-oh, Pastor Adam's in trouble. He is. I don't know what she's gonna pick, but it's gonna be good. This is gonna be great. Should we go? go? Yeah. All right. Aha! Hi, Miss Jen! Hey. Hello, Miss Jen! <laughs> I heard you have something for our mystery box. I do. This is our student ministry bullhorn, and I am so excited to see what Adam is going to say. About a this. bullhorn? What? Yeah, listen. What does it do? It's got a siren on it. It also plays some music. Oh, he's going to love that. And you can also talk into it. It gets really loud. Awesome. I love that. We use that. this at student ministry events all the time. So. I am very excited. Oh, it's gonna fit. Yeah, it is. Oh, it fits. It fits. It's heavy. It's heavy. So I'm very excited to see so, what Adam is gonna say about this one. Any ideas? What do you think he's gonna talk about? I, I really don't know. I don't have much of an idea. Oh, well, I know he's gonna play with it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of my goal. I think it will be entertaining. Turn the volume up so it can get nice and loud. Well, we'll just have to find out what exactly he has to say, because it's got to connect to the Bible somehow. Somehow. I'm somehow. sure we'll find a way. I'm curious to see what it will be, though. That'll be interesting. Awesome. Can you do us a favor? Yes. Can you wave to all the kids in Kids Zone and tell them hi? Hi, guys. I hope you all have a fun day today. I'm excited to see what Pastor Adam has to say about this. Y'all are going to have so much fun with your craft today, too. Can't wait. Okay, well, it's time to find out what's inside here. So, Peyton, I'm going to take a step back because I'm a little frightened. Okay, are you, are you brave? You feeling brave? You feeling good? Okay, Peyton, why don't you open the box and see what's inside? <gasps> oh, do you know what that is? Here, let's, let's get it out of there. Let's get it out. Oh, okay. It's a megaphone. It's a megaphone. Do you know how that works? No. No? Here, let's see. Let's, here, let me see it for a second. Let me see if we can get this folded out and then we could turn it on. And now, can you talk into that? Hello? Maybe, here, a little louder. Hello? Now, give everybody some instructions. Tell them what to do. That's what a megaphone's for. You, if somebody's really far away and they can't hear you with the normal voice, you could use a microphone. A megaphone. This is a megaphone. Yeah. This is mega. Yeah? yeah? Do you think? You know what else it does? It makes really loud noises. Do you want to push that button right there? That, that one, that one. Really loud noises. I told you I was scared to open this box to see what was inside. All right, we're going to turn that off. Do you want to try the other button? Here we go. You ready? So this is, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Would you like one of these to tell your little brother what to do? <laughs> yeah, would that be helpful? Yeah, I think my kids would like one of these to tell me what to do. They, they like to, sometimes they talk really loud to me. Do you ever talk really loud to your parents? No, that's not nice. You know, I, Peyton, I think this is a really cool thing because sometimes, sometimes we think that when God talks to us, it's gonna be like a megaphone. It's gonna be really loud. 
but when we read the scriptures, there's this great story of a guy named Elijah, and he went up into this into this cave, and he was hanging out in this cave, and he says there was this big, loud noise, like the noise of the music when we started it. But he said God's voice wasn't in the big, loud noise, and he said, I said then there was an earthquake, and and. And he was waiting to hear God's voice in that, but God's voice wasn't in that. And then, and then he said there was the sound of quiet. And he heard God's voice, God's still, small voice. What do you think about that? I think it was really bad. And, um, yeah. God's voice is really Quiet. Yeah, you got to listen for God's voice, right? And that's, we've been talking about prayer all through the season of Lent. And so that's what prayer does, is it helps us to, to quiet down and to hear God's voice sometimes. Because God doesn't always talk to us in a really loud megaphone. Sometimes he talks to us like a friend. Isn't that a neat thing? Do you yell at your friends? No, no, you talk to your friends. And so God talks to us, too, in that same way. So I hope you guys will pray and listen for God's voice. And maybe it'll sound a little louder. But maybe it'll sound just like a still, small whisper, like a, like a good friend might say to you. All right, we're going to pray together. You want to pray with me? All right, let's pray right now. God, thank you that you want to talk to us. God, thank you that your voice is, is present in our lives. God, as we pray, we pray that we would tune our ears to hear your voice. God, that we wouldn't look for you in the big and the loud, but God, we would calm our hearts and our heads so that we can hear from you in that still, small voice like a whisper telling us how much you love us. God, we pray we would all hear that voice today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Peyton, are you ready to do a craft with everybody? Yeah? Do you like doing crafts? Me too. Let's go hang out with Miss Catherine. We'll see you guys next week. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad you've joined us for Kids Out O'Clock. We are still in the season of Lent. Tell me about what you've been doing during Lent. Have you tried something new? Did you take something on? Or did you give something up? Maybe candy or video games? Or are you doing something else creative to get close with God, to improve your relationship, to get to know Jesus better? Love to hear your ideas. Well, as you know, the season of Lent, each week we have been adding something to our crosses. The first week we made a cross. So if you're just now tuning in, it's not too late. Go ahead and um, make or find a cross. And then we added our purple cloth to remind us that Jesus is our king. Purple is the color of royalty. It's also the color we use during Lent. The other thing we've added, we have added some silver coins um, to remind us the, of what happened that one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, uh, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. So we added that as part of the Easter story. Today we're going to add another object to our cross to continue to tell the story of, um, of Easter. So... Next, we are going to add our crown of thorns. Now, we learn in the book of Matthew um, that when the soldiers were making fun of Jesus, remember we talked about the, the purple for us represents that Jesus is our king, but it also is important to remember that the soldiers put a purple robe on Jesus and made fun of him. Well, when they did that, they also put a crown of thorns on Jesus. Can you imagine how badly that must have hurt? And they did it, they made fun of him. It wasn't a real crown they put on his head. It was a very sharp, painful, thorny crown that they put on his head to make fun of him. And that's um, not one of my favorite parts of the story, but it is so important to remember how much Jesus loves us 
It didn't matter what those soldiers did to him. It didn't change Jesus's mind about how much he loves us, about what he was willing to do for us. And um, he showed us that by dying on the cross for us. And it's because of that, that we get to live forever with God and are no longer separated from him. So that's the good news. But for your crown of thorns, and I'm just gonna kind of put it up here just like that. That one's kind of sharp. For your crown of thorns, depending on how big your cross is, you may want to make one out of some um, some twigs or some pieces of grass. For our smaller crosses, we are using the little miniature grapevine wreaths. So look around your house, see what you have that could represent a crown of thorns and add that item to your cross so that you can remember to tell that part of the story. I'll see you next time.